Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. I'm posting a little later in the day than usual because I actually, the painting that I was gonna create a video for today, I hadn't quite finished yet. I started painting yesterday, didn't get enough time to get done before daylight ran out. So I finished it up this morning and uh, now here's the video. So it's a bit of a longer painting, a time-lapse tutorial of an elephant. And I actually did the sketch for this painting last year, so a way long time ago, and I finally got around to painting it yesterday and today. So I'm really excited to share it with you. Uh, the subject matter is an elephant and uh, it has uh, non-typical colors. So there's a whole rainbow of colors in it and not the kind of expected grays, browns, and blacks that you would think on a, in a real life elephant, but because the value and the contrast is at the same levels you would see on a real-to-life elephant, it communicates to our brain, oh, that's an elephant. So it's kind of fun to combine the realistic imagery, making it look realistic with, with non-realistic colors. So it gives it a little bit of a fantastical, whimsical quality. So I have the time-lapse tutorial for you. I'm gonna talk through what I did, some of my process, and I hope you enjoy. So I'm starting out, <clears throat> pardon me, with a round brush and I was initially going to start kind of on the cheek and face and then realized it would be better to work from left to right. So then I used the wet into wet technique on the ear and you can see that there are all different kinds of colors in there. I, I tend to have a bit more brown, a lot of the brown throughout to hint at that kind of realist, more realistic color but it really is just making sure that the value of the color, which that means the lightness or the darkness of it, matches the reference image. And the reference image is linked in the description. It's from unsplash.com. Uh, they have copyright free photos on there, but I always like to give the photographer credit. So a lot of wet into wet technique here for those loose flowing colors. You can see how when you play, uh, place just plain water with your brush on the paper and then go back over while it's still wet with wet paint, the edges bleed out really nicely and it makes everything a little more smooth. Whereas like right here with the eye, I have very thick paint, not a lot of water in it and it's on the dry paper so that the edges don't bleed and it makes a very fine, sharp delineation. So that's what you want with the details. You don't want to use the wet into wet technique for details you want wet on dry. And so you'll see that I kind of revisit several different areas of the painting kind of throughout this whole time frame. So that is really uh, what a lot of kind of realism is about. You'll see in many of my other uh, timeless tutorials that I talk about adding layers. So basically like building up the dimension essentially. So it's not just, you know, one layer of paint and you're done. It's okay, I've kind of filled in this area, have some paint and I've added some details, and then as you keep working further, you'll go back to some of those original parts you painted and realize, okay, I need to build up how dark it is, or I need to add some more detail, or um, things like that. So it's really about building up layers, and you can see, uh, even with some of these parts where I kind of have the initial paint down and I'm starting to add details over the top, ideally you kind of want to have your paint kind of built up to the correct uh, value or darkness and then go over with the fine the um, final details but every once in a while as you're working you'll realize oh that really didn't get dark enough so you can kind of go back over and especially once it's completely dry um, when you work wet into wet colors tend to bleed into each other so your um, your stuff can your paint can get kind of muddy colored so if you're gonna go back over to add some color over the top you want to wait for everything below it to completely dry and then go back over with some color that will um, help you to prevent all the colors bleeding into each other and just getting kind of this muddy grayish tone The brushes I'm using this, I know it's going really fast, are mostly these round brushes. So I have the one that's currently in my hand is actually a size zero. And this brand, they have kind of larger brushes than typical. Usually a size zero brush is a very, very fine tip. But because these come to such a nice fine point, uh, I guess they just decided to kind of size them up. So the one currently in my hand is a size three. 
And again, it's really more like the size of an 8 or a 10 with many other brands. So uh, the, the type of brush is in the description. So if you're curious about it, you can uh, kind of look at the name there. So um, I'm just going in and adding patches of color on the nose right now. You can see I'm leaving some of the lighter uh, tones underneath to show through. That's going to give you the variation of this leathery skin so you have some of the lighter tones showing through between the darker ones and it's a lot easier to try and do that uh up front with with kind of like building it up that way so you have your lighter tones rather than going back and trying to lift watercolor off top i had a little boo-boo you'll see <laughs> just very shortly i used my handkerchief to uh lift up with some water that little boo-boo on the side but anyhow so um, see how I try as much as possible in the areas where there are kind of highlights between the skin, the lighter tones between your darker skin. Um, if you maintain that, it gives you that sense of texture and again, contrast between lighter values and darker values. And the tusks are have a little bit more kind of detail. They're not just plain white tusks they have some wear and tear on them so hence kind of some of this coloring on there plus the shadows and you can see on here as i'm working on the shadow underneath the ear the shadows are pretty dramatic in this so that shadow from the tusk the shadow right underneath the chin and that little piece of ear the um left ear and then uh the shadow underneath the elephant's right ear it's it's very very dark and dramatic so really building up as much black as possible you don't have a lot of water in there and even then i still had to kind of go back you can see kind of a little bit of that shadow underneath the on the chest is a little um there's some way the paper showing through for this texture kind of what i was doing is i have a a uh, size six, and I'm, that's not what I'm currently holding, but I'm telling you about it. I have a size six round brush, but it's not like a round tip the way this one is. When I kind of pat, dip it in paint and somewhat pat it dry on a towel, but where there's still paint on it and it gets kind of dry, that is where I get that texture from, and I just kind of like dab it across the surface. So you can really use your brushes to create texture and uh, again, balance between the wet into wet technique and then dry, uh, wet paint on dry paper. So that um, wet paint, that kind of stippling is and dotting is definitely wet paint on dry paper. And just really kind of, again, the same kind of like color happening. Uh, on the chest and here I am using my pen and nib to scrape out the kind of top layer of the paper and have a little fine line details here and there it just adds a little extra kind of detail and realism I did use a tiny bit of white ink on that trunk but for the most part the white uh, details if I hadn't maintain them I went back with the pen and nib and now here's the fun part where you can just kind of splatter and flat the water on there with a brush and then I blew on it a couple times here and there and there's a signature and that is the final piece. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, God bless, and I'll see you soon.